Well, the Federal Reserve is wrapping up its two-day policy meeting today. The central bank widely expected to announce a 50 basis point rate hike. And our very own Brian Chung, live for us in Washington, D.C. today. By the way, Brian, we should mention this is the first in-person press conference you're going to be attending since the pandemic began. The messaging so key for Jay Powell. What are we expecting? Yeah, absolutely. First time we are going to be back in person. No more of the Brady Bunch boxes. I have to actually stay at a hotel. I brought my slippers with me to uh, kind of uh, make my trip down here. Obviously, the Federal Reserve very much in focus as we do eye that 50 basis point increase from the central bank. It seems like all signs are a go for the largest interest rate increase that we've seen since May of 2000. So actually no surprise expected in the policy statement when that does kick off at 2 p.m. But that doesn't mean I don't have any questions, which, of course, Akiko brings us to our FOMC three, the three things that I'm watching for in that meeting. So 50 basis points today. The big question, naturally, could there be 0.75 percent moves later this year? You see some like Nomura, for example, calling for that. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard also advocating for more aggressive moves later on this year. Very much going to be interesting to see if the Fed chairman wants to bite on whether or not even more aggressive moves, a gigabump perhaps, could be in the cards later this year. My number two question, though, is how low can you go? Not necessarily the cha-cha slide here, but really asking the question about the balance sheet. Again, the Fed has $9 trillion in assets, a lot of it accumulated during the depths of the pandemic when they were trying to message to markets its uh, significant support. Of course, the Fed wants to begin the process of actually actively shrinking its asset holdings by allowing some maturing assets to roll off. Now, uh, a preliminary discussion in March detailed a perhaps $95 billion a month plan to do so. We're expected to get the finalized detail on this on that in today's meeting. But my number one question is the number one question everyone's asking, which is, look, at the end of the day, when does inflation moderate? That's the whole purpose for the Fed tightening itself. The Fed very clear, at least in the messaging over the last few weeks, that inflation won't go back to 2% on an annual basis, at least this year. But if the Fed gets more aggressive, could they maybe pull forward expectations for inflation to come down? We will have to see in that press conference from Jay Powell, which is going to kick off at 2.30 p.m., which, of course, the full coverage of right here on Yahoo Finance. Yeah, and you certainly are going to be in the room with uh, the Fed chair. You know, Brian, we were talking about this yesterday. It is such a delicate balance that Jay Powell has to navigate right now. You've got, obviously, you know, him having to come forward and make it pretty clear that they are moving aggressively to tame inflation and yet not too aggressively that it pulls back growth in the economy overall. I mean, how, how do you think he finds that balance? Well, I mean, this is kind of the uh, issue that they don't want to acknowledge, which is that the risk of recession is very much real. And I don't think that you should expect to see the Fed chairman acknowledge that it's possible Fed tightening could happen too rapid of a pace that could actually tilt the economy into a recession. You're already seeing some concerns just off of the stock market moves and the bond market moves over the last few uh, trading sessions over the last few weeks, over the last few months, over a possible recessionary uh, outcome in 2024, perhaps. But the Fed chairman is going to say, look, at the end of the day, the primary goal here is to make sure that it's not inflation that's going to be the issue here. And when it comes to trying to tamp all that down, the Fed has acknowledged that it has to get more aggressive, hence the unprecedented rate hike of the size that we are expecting to see at the conclusion of today's meeting. But of course, naturally, the question is, even if that avoids a recessionary outcome, at least today, if the Fed has to continue to ratchet interest rates, can they get up to a 2.5, perhaps 3% short-term interest rate by next year without abruptly ending this recession and killing economic growth? We already saw that negative print on Q1 GDP, very much a warning sign for the Federal Reserve officials down on Constitution Avenue. Okay, we will, we'll, we will be watching very closely today, 2 p.m. Eastern. Brian's gonna have live coverage, and of course, uh, I know you're gonna be in the room when that press conference begins at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for that, Brian.